And Senator McClellan, with my apologies, would you mind uh, returning? And uh, we will take up uh, your bill, which is Senate Bill 910. And yes. uh, by agreement earlier, we are going to set a, uh, a clock uh, on uh, that that bill of about three minutes. We had a good long discussion with you and others uh, last week, and so yes. we're going to move through that. But you you uh, have a bill that you care a lot about, so you mind presenting your bill? Okay. Um, Ms. Chair, let me give you a little bit of background first as to why why this is so important to me. Um, in 2010, when I became pregnant, it was historic here in the General Assembly. Um, not only was I the first member of the House of Delegates to be pregnant while in office, um, it was the first time that my OBGYN had a legislator as a captive audience in her office. Um, over the course of my pregnancy, as I went in for checkups and ultrasounds, um, we had some discussions about how abortion laws could impact my pregnancy um, and how, it impact, how they impact pregnancies that go horribly wrong. The doctor who administered my ultrasounds is a medical ethicist. We had lots of discussions that opened my eyes to how abortion restrictions in Virginia law can impact his patients. He told me about Susie, a married 30-something with a hole in her heart, who was on birth control but got pregnant anyway. Beth, who was a pregnant woman who had developed cancer. Each woman faced a heartbreaking choice whether to terminate the pregnancy or sacrifice her life. Mary, who underwent fertility treatments to have a child and got pregnant with octuplets. The odds of carrying the pregnancy to term were very low, but if she reduced the pregnancy to two, the odds were better than 50-50 that those two would survive. Amy, who suffered an incomplete or missed miscarriage in which the fetus dies but remains in the uterus and a surgical procedure or medicinal abortion is necessary to remove the fetus and the placenta from the uterus. Robin, whose fetus developed the most severe form of spina bifida with horrific deformities. The doctor suspected that the baby was already paralyzed from the waist down and the paralysis would spread as he grew. He was not expected to survive. My ultrasound technician said that whenever these cases were brought up, he often heard, well, that's not really an abortion, but it is. And because Virginia law does not distinguish between these types of abortions, all abortion laws apply to them as well. And I'll give you one example of what that can do. Under Virginia Code 18.1-76, prior to any abortion, a woman must undergo a transabdominal ultrasound to determine the gestational age and be given an opportunity to view the ultrasound image and listen to the fetal heartbeat. In all of the stories I just outlined, that, would be a, that is a devastating state mandate, which is also unnecessary because in those case, the cases, gestational age would have already been determined. The woman would then have to wait 24 hours before the procedure, and if she purchases insurance out of the exchange or is covered by Medicaid, she might not have her procedure covered. For abortions performed early in the pregnancy, that, tra that, trans that transabdominal ultrasound is useless because the fetus can't be seen and gestational age may not be able to be determined. It took me two ultrasounds from my first pregnancy for a gestational age to be determined. And that was through a transvaginal ultrasound. That mandate also adds additional costs. Comprehensive reproductive health care, including safe and legal abortion, is a vital component to a woman's overall health and should be protected. In its landmark decision on June 27, 2016, in the Whole Women's Health versus Hellerstadt, the U.S. Supreme Court affirmed that access to abortion is a fundamental constitutional right and clarified that the undue burden standard provides robust protections for abortion access. The Whole Women's Health Act codifies, this bill, Senate Bill 910, codifies the fundamental right to access abortion into Virginia state law, repeals state restrictions that impede access to abortion, and makes it illegal to enforce a new regulation on abortion that has no legitimate medical benefit. Laws that restrict women's access to abortion often harm the very women that they purport to help. The laws related to shutting down women's reproductive health care providers make it increasingly difficult and sometimes impossible 
for a woman who has decided to end her pregnancy, for whatever reason, access to a safe, legal, high quality care that she needs. <clears throat> a woman's ability to access health care, including abortion, should not depend on her income, her address, or the type of insurance she has. These restrictions can create sharp disparities in access that are troubly reminiscent to a time before Roe versus Wade, when access depended on your economic status, your race, where you lived, or your ability to travel to another state. Leading medical experts and organizations, many of whom are here, oppose medically unnecessary restrictions on women's health care services. Finally, abortion does not belong in the criminal code. In Virginia, if a medical provider induces an abortion or a miscarriage outside the express narrow definitions of the law, they could face a fourth degree felony charge, earning from one to 10 years in jail. In the majority of other states, there is no criminal punishment, but a civil fine or other consequences under the state's medical licensing body. I know this is a very difficult topic, but the decision to terminate a pregnancy is a very difficult one. It should be made by the woman, her partner, her family, her, her faith, her physician, but not by state government. And for that reason, uh, I've introduced uh, Senate Bill 910. Thank you, Senator. Are there questions to the Senator about uh, Senate Bill 910? Yeah, Senator Chase. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Senator McClellan. Um, I just had a, a question for you. Um, on line 224, um, SB 910, it seems to strike the word, the term physician, as it currently appears in the code and replace it with health care provider. Um, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but when I'm reading the language of the bill, it almost seems like this is a change of the scope of practice. Um, you're, you're changing the term, you're, the, the way the original language is written <coughs> is that it, it currently is um, a physician that is performing these, um, is as it, it currently appears in the code, but now we're changing that, that to healthcare provider. And if I look up the definition <clears throat> of healthcare provider, um, I think there's a lot of um, concern there because we're including in healthcare provider that the definition includes dentist, pharmacist, it includes an optometrist, a podiatrist, chiropractor, um, and the list goes on. I don't know that you intentionally meant to um, change the scope of practice, but that, in fact, is what the language um, actually does. Um, well, nurse pra in other states, this, this language is based on what has... Uh, been right. introduced in other states. And, and this then, is, um, I'm just referring to Virginia State Code 8.01-581. I understand. Okay, I'm going to phone a friend right now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Hi, good morning. I'm Agata Felka from the Center for Reproductive Rights. Um, so it's correct that that does remove the restriction that's a physician-only restriction that can be provided, um, but only <clears throat> providers who you know, are trained to provide abortion care will be able to do that, but it does remove the restriction that only physicians right now would be able to do it. Okay, thank it's you for your comment, Mr. Yep, Chairman. Senator Chase, yes. Um, but I would say, you know, we need to look at what the language is. I know your intent is good, yeah. and I appreciate that, but I'm looking at the language of the bill, and the language, according to the Code of Virginia, it has not been amended, and it, it's, it includes optometrist, podiatrist, um, and these other groups, so that would need to, um, you know, we need to take, whenever you're expanding the definition, I'm just looking at what the code defines healthcare provider as, and I'm just wondering, I mean, it seems like this bill is changing the scope of the practice. Okay. All right. Um, is there any other comment about that? If not, um, Senator McClellan, uh, I think we're going to change the clock from three minutes to five minutes. You've got a few more people here, but we're going to hold pretty hard on that five minutes, so if you just help your people move through that, that would be helpful. I think they've been instructed to sort of combine where possible and okay. that they'd yes, be limited. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You. Thank you. Would those that are in support of the bill come forward, please? Hi. So as I said, I was from the Center for Reproductive Rights. We were the lead counsel in the 2016 <coughs> Whole Women's Health Supreme Court case. And I just wanted to note that Virginia's current trap restrictions cannot survive the constitutional standard that's articulated in this case. And for that reason, we support this bill as it would repeal those standards. Thank you for coming by. Others that are here to speak in favor of the bill. 
Good morning, committee members, and thank you. My name is Jesse Torrey. I'm the managing director of Whole Woman's Health Alliance. We are a or nonprofit organization committed to providing high quality, holistic reproductive care for our patients, including abortion care. We have recently opened our clinic in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, I am really proud to be a part of this organization that challenged restrictive abortion laws in Texas, took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and won. We won the victory in the whole women's health case, not just for Texans, but for people in this country all over, including Virginians. It is a privilege to stand here with you today and represent the organization for whom this very act is named. I'm also here representing myself as a Virginian. Um, abortion is a fact, abortion is safe, abortion is health care, and it must be protected. The Whole Women's Health Act ensures the fundamental constitutional right to access abortion and repeals unnecessary restrictions, restrictions that are not medically necessary but serve only to shame and stigmatize women and impede their ability to access <coughs> comprehensive medical care. I urge you to support the Whole Women's Health Act that will remove these unnecessary and harmful government intrusions into a woman's right to make her own medical decisions and access high quality abortion care when and if she determines that's what she needs. Great, thank, thank you for coming. Appreciate you traveling to see us. Um, up next, uh, and if you have written comments, because the people in the back of the line may not get there. I urge you to supply that to staff if you'd like. But welcome. Thank you for coming today. Hello, everyone. My name is Kristen Glykoff, and my representative is Chad Peterson. Um, so nothing is more devastating than seeing a friend in trouble and being helpless. My friend needed an abortion, but she, we were too young and couldn't drive and couldn't work. I tried selling my clothes. I tried raising money online, but it really wasn't enough. When... <laughs> She had no other option but to tell her unsupportive parents they forced her to drop out of high school. Uh, now I'm in college and she's working on her GED. If more qualified providers could perform abortions, perhaps she could have traveled less expensively to a closer health care center. If second trimester abortions weren't limited to hospitals, maybe we could have saved longer. There is no doubt that each of these medically inconsequential regulations played its part but not to ensure the well-being of my friend. Please support the Whole Woman's Health Act and support women like my friend. Thank you. Great, thank you. You have about two minutes left. Welcome. Good morning, thank you for the opportunity. I'm Dr. Wendy Klein. I am a lifelong uh, provider of women's health care and de dedicated to improving care. I just wanna say that I strongly support this bill, which guarantees women uh, the necessary care that they need and puts the state in in concert with the Supreme Court whole women's health decision. Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Others, welcome. Good morning, Rebecca Gottwald, Fairfax. Good morning. Uh, when I was young, it was already difficult enough to get comprehensive re reproductive care in some parts of Virginia. I was denied birth control help at County Health and fell pregnant. It was nearly impossible to find the resources and money to make the 120-mile trip to obtain a safe abortion. And this was before the trap laws were in place. These restrictions have closed more providers for no medical reason, putting abortion out of reach for some Virginia residents. We need to guarantee choice and bring the Commonwealth in line with the whole Women's Health Supreme Court decision. Great. Thanks. What next? Welcome. Good morning, I'm Jacqueline Nantier Hopewell, the president of Prince William County Chapter of the National Organization for Women. I'm here reading for Megan Kinkle. Good morning, my name is Megan Kinkle, and my representative is Senator Peterson. I am a registered nurse specializing in labor and delivery, and today I'm asking you to vote in favor of SB 910 and bring Virginia into compliance with the whole Women's Health Supreme Court ruling. Requirements like mandatory waiting periods purposely delays abortion procedures, which can jeopardize a patient's health and safety. A first trimester abortion is extremely safe with a risk of complication of less than 0.5%. As with many me common medical procedures, the longer a procedure is delayed, the more the chance of a complication can increase. The, furthermore, the risk of, uh, risk of compilation of, for a first trimester abortion is less than that of a wisdom tooth extraction. But why are clinics that provide abortion subject to stricter reg regulations than dental offices? Again, politically motivated barriers that single out abortion can hurt, not help Virginia women. Our patients rely on medical professionals like me to make the best decisions for themselves. The medical community does not need government interfering in our evidence-based, high quality of care practices. To do so puts our patients and fellow Virginians at risk. Please support SB 10910. Thank you. Great. 
So, uh, Senator McClellan, uh, would the others like to just state their name and their support? Is that okay with you? That's fine. If you and mi I don't mind just stating your name and that you support, we'd love to hear that from you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jennifer Allen, Planned Parenthood Advocates of Virginia. We support the bill. Thank Thanks you. for coming by today. Yes. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Tarina Keene. I'm the executive director of NARAL Pro-Choice Virginia, and we definitely support this bill. Well, thank you for coming today. Others would just like to state their support? Yes. Hello. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Casey Chavez from Fairfax, Virginia. I support this bill. Great. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hello. On behalf of Caitlin Bunny, constituent of Center Sass Law, she supports this bill. Great. Thanks. Hello. Hello. My name is Michelle Wooten of Hampton, Virginia, and I support this bill. Thanks for coming by today. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Jessica Lunderberg from Alexandria, Virginia, and I support this bill. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Good morning. My name is Nicole Graham from Alexandria, Virginia, and I support this bill. You Thank you. Too. Okay, good. Yes. My name is Al Durante from Spotsylvania, Virginia, and I wholeheartedly and morally support this bill. Okay. Thanks for your help. Good. Mr. Chairman, Scott Price from the Alliance for Progressive Virginia, and on behalf of our membership, we ask that you support this bill. Scott, thanks for coming. Yes. My name's Patricia Joshi. I'm from Stafford, Virginia, and I support this bill um, tremendously, and I hope that you do vote it out of committee. Thank Great. you. Thanks for coming. Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, Deputy Secretary of Health and Human Resources, Gina Berger. I just want to let you know the administration does support the bill. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, Senator McClellan, would you like to wrap up, and then we'll see if there's any questions? Uh, I we'll, would. We'll, I... We'll, we'll take opposition. I'm sorry. But uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't we do opposition first? Yep. The opposition, uh, there will also be a five-minute clock. I apologize. Would you come forward and state your concerns about the bill? Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I'm Victoria Cobb with the Family Foundation of Virginia. Senate Bill 910 is the abortion industry's entire wish list, creating a fundamental right to abortion in our code. Everything they could possibly do to increase the volume of abortion and thus profit with little concern for the emotional or physical well-being of women encountering this decision and certainly no regard for the unborn in the, lot, in the path of destruction. This proposal removes all information that might allow a woman to make an informed decision and which, even if she still chooses to go through with the abortion, would reduce the amount of regret after she has after this life-altering decision. It also denies a woman the ability to see her ultrasound. This bill removes the standards that this body put into place to ensure that abortion facilities are safe. Since putting these standards into place, hundreds of safety violations have been addressed, including blood on the tables and medical equipment, mishandling of Schedule II narcotics, and the list goes on. But more than just removing the safety standards, this bill allows these would-be now uninspected centers that have shown themselves to be problematic during the inspections to now be doing second trimester abortions. The bill has 20 plus week abortions happening outside of a hospital. In this brave new pro-abortion world created in this bill, unless a woman is getting a later term abortion, she would not even be guaranteed a doctor would perform her abortion. Instead, she might have a surgical abortion performed by a midwife. One of the most egregious parts of this bill is that it vastly widens the currently narrow rationale where our law allows a third trimester abortion by no longer requiring that a woman's physical or mental health be substantially and unfixably impaired by concurrence of three doctors to legally have a second or third trimester abortion, this bill creates abortion virtually on demand up until the point of birth. I don't think this committee, nor the larger body, wants to give its stamp of approval on the taking of life up until its birth. Sadly, this bill admits what we've known all along, that despite claims that abortion sympathizers only oppose clinic safety because supposedly the centers are already safe, despite claims that they only dislike informed consent because it has an ultrasound involved, and despite claims that when we're addressing abortion law, we're basically just talking about a blob of tissue in the early stages of life, this, this, <coughs> this bill makes it clear that abortion industry and its sympathizers want it all. Unregulated, late-term abortion being performed by nurses and midwives, not even physicians, I'm disappointed I'm even having to stand here to talk about this radical shift of policy that is happening in concurrence with the fact that every year more and more Virginians are pro-life. Thank you. Okay, guys, you have about two minutes left. Welcome. Eddie Aylip, Virginia Assembly Independent Baptist. And while I know that we are opposed to abortion in general, 
we realize that there are folks in our churches that do take advantage of this. And we would want the safest possible facility for these women who are doing a, a very difficult, making a very difficult decision. And therefore, we prefer not to see any of, the, any of the changes that are put forth in this bill. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you. Bill Ray with the Virginia Catholic Conference. Um, I just want to make a few brief points. One, our contention is that abortion is not health care because it doesn't save lives. It ends them. Abortion is not safe because when it works properly, someone dies. But I will add one more thing. As long as our many social services and charities remain open, there are no unwanted children. I would say to anybody facing an unplanned pregnancy, please give us the child. We want the child. We have adoption services. We want the child. Give us the child. Thank you. Thanks for coming. We've got about a minute left. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, Louise Hartz from Henrico County, representing the Virginia Society for Human Life. For 51 years, Virginia Society for Human Life has been there to protect the lives of the unborn. We oppose this House Senate bill to 910. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. All right. Uh, th with that, uh, we will uh, stop the clock. And uh, Senator, why don't you uh, wrap up, and we'll have uh, some discussion within the committee and, and, and vote. Thank, thank, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Look, I know this is um, a very difficult, a very controversial um, decision. Um, but these are decisions that are not made lightly. And these are decisions that, um, like, like any other medical procedure, should be between the person involved and their physician. And, and too often, when the General Assembly has put in place restrictions, they have far-reaching consequences that impact not just unwanted pregnancies, but wanted pregnancies that go horribly wrong. We have an opportunity to, to correct that. And all I would say is, you don't need the state code to determine how someone is going to feel when they've made the very difficult decision to terminate a pregnancy. And I would say you don't reach your second or third trimester and wake up one day and decide, I just don't want to be pregnant anymore. Usually there are very serious complications and reasons why you are making that decision. And too many of our laws in place uh, don't, don't take that into account. And I thank you for your time. Perfect. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, there are discussion or motion on the bill, Senate Bill 910. All right, there's a motion to PBI and a substitute motion that the bill be reported. Uh, the primary motion now will be that the bill be reported. All those in favor of reporting the bill will record their votes aye. Those opposed, no. The clerk will close the roll. I have seven days eight without opposition. The bill will be uh, flipped for uh, for PBI. Um, so